More trouble. Right. More heartache. Uh -huh. More tears. Yep. I've tried to hold on to my savings account. I've tried to hold on to my pocketbook. But you know what happens? More sorrow. More pain. More emptiness. There was a time within my life my heart was shattered and it was torn into thousands of pieces. My money did me no good. The people, you could, you could surround yourself with a lot of people, but it never did you any good. But there was one little talk with Jesus, like the song says, it made everything all right. Aren't you thankful we can go to somebody much higher? And we don't have to have the fancy clothes on. We don't have to have some kind of a reputation or some kind of popularity to be able to get into the presence of God. All we need is to come in the name of Jesus. That's all we're going to need. We begin to can, can speak faith in the midst of a storm. <coughs> we can speak faith in the midst of our storms. So many times when we get into storms, sometimes we we'll find ourselves thinking just like the disciples did. We're going to perish. The boat is beginning to get filled up. It's surely going to fall apart. Start thinking negatively. We begin to surround ourselves with those types of people if we're not careful. And they begin to discourage us. Well, I don't know what I'd do if I was in that shape, if I got those kind of results. And you begin to question yourself. You still keep hold of the Lord. He's still in control. The Bible tells us that, you know, that every single one of us is going to experience things. But the question is, are you going to allow it to break you? Are you allow it to keep you broken? Like that song says, you might have, I might have gone down in the heat of the battle, but don't count me out of the fight. Rejoice not over me, O my enemies, for when I fall, I shall rise again. We can do something that the devil cannot do, and that's get up. You know that? He's been knocked down and he can't get back up. He can get caught in a storm, and he'll stay in the storm. And he desires to bring us in there with him. There's so many people out there tonight that are in storms. You and I are privileged. It's a blessing to be able to come to the house of God and be able to hear His Word. Be able to feel His presence. Be able to be encouraged. Most of all, have Him dwelling on the inside of us. To comfort us. He says, I might go away. And the disciples probably thought, well, what do you mean you're going to go away? I didn't think He was ever going to leave. You can't leave us. He said, oh, but if I go away, it's, it's good for me to go away because I go to my Father. And I will send a comfort unto you, which is the Holy Spirit. And He will bring into your remembrance all things that I have said unto you. Ain't it good to know that even though we might find ourselves distant from this church, distant from this Bible, and distant maybe from, uh, maybe we could just be going down the road. And the Lord can touch us. He can comfort us in the midst of the storm. We might not always have access to this place, but we can always have access to Him. And you and I, I stand here today because I did not perish in the midst of my storms. I should have. The Bible, in fact, tells you and I that the wages of sin is death. We perish. But the gift of God is eternal life. He's given you and I life. And if we obtain nothing else out of this life, I'm thankful that I get to go to heaven, Kathleen. Because you know there's nothing that I've done or any of us could ever do to go. I have a lot of longings. I have a lot of desires. I'm still young. But I realize that I can do nothing of myself. And I'm so thankful that I get to go to heaven. You know, I long for a lot of things. I want a lot of things. But I can't get over the fact that a person like myself gets to go to heaven. You know that. We didn't get to perish. You and I have maybe slipped, maybe we have fallen. But you're here tonight. The devil wanted to keep you out tonight. He wants to keep you away from tomorrow. You know what? Sometimes when we get in our storms, we don't, may not think that tomorrow is going to come. And we're not promised tomorrow. But the results were so dramatic 
that it discourages so much and think, if I could just see tomorrow, if I could just see another day, maybe you've slipped, maybe you've fallen up, and thinking, I don't even want to get up tomorrow. I heard this story some time ago, and I might, I hope it's going to pull us off track, but I pray it would be encouragement to you when you've slipped and you've fallen. <coughs> and your devil wants to come to you and say, don't you get back up. And you begin to feel that grief, feel that disappointment, and feel that burden. And you want to be, and the devil wants to try to pull you out of the presence of God. I heard this story about this little dog called Lucky. Now Lucky liked to get in the garbage. And, but as long as the owner was there, Lucky never got caught in the garbage. But one day, they decided to go out. And guess what Lucky did? He got in the garbage. The owner came back home. He seen the mess that Lucky done. But for some reason, he couldn't find Lucky. Of course, the owner, he cleaned up the mess and went to do what he needed to do for that day. He would look around, look out the yard, but still couldn't find Lucky. Later on, he began to see Lucky. Lucky had his tail between his legs and his head down real low. He didn't know that the owner had done taken care of his problem. You know, the, the Lord has taken care of your my problem when he died upon the cross. He's taken care of every single storm that you and I will ever face. Maybe in, in, in any type of sin, any type of discouragement, any type of trouble that you might be experiencing. He's taking care of it. You don't have to keep yourself away from Him. He wants to hear from you. He, that's like that scripture we read in Peter. Cast all your cares upon Him because He cares for us. He does. But we fail to come to Him. Many people fall apart because of some of the situations you face. Maybe, maybe some of the results that you receive. But we can be able to speak that faith as I talked about earlier. We can say as in Psalms 91, a thousand shall fall by thy left hand and ten thousand at thy right side but it shall not come nigh thy dwelling. What are you saying? I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to let this break me. In fact, I'm going to let it make me into the what I need to be for the Lord. I know that I might not get delivered from this. I know that I might not come out. There's going to come a day when all tears are going to be wiped away. There's not going to be no more pain. There's no going to be no more sorrow because Jesus Christ bought yours and my ticket to heaven. Well, there's not going to be another sorrow. Yeah. I begin to think and I begin to get discouraged. You know, this morning I, I had the uh, privilege of being here with you all and be able to seek the Lord about some things. And there's a lot of people in my life that are facing storms. Many people that are struggling from depression. Many people that are struggling. They might be this, these people might be saved, but they're struggling from depression. They just don't feel motivated to do anything. I feel empty. I feel discouraged. I just feel like God's distant from me. You know He cares for you. I'm all by myself. No, you're not. He's right there with you. But we begin to, I begin to think about these individuals and I can hear their cry. Because I've cried it, right? I've cried it. Lord, don't you care if I perish? This hurts so bad. Don't you care if I perish? All I can see is the storm. I, I can't see a way out. You find yourself so busy and so caught up in this life that we get visually impaired and we can't see God how we ought to. Maybe the wind was blowing. Maybe the rain was smacking us in the face and we was unable to see. Maybe the water was up over our heads. Like Peter, keep your hands up. Keep your eyes looking up. The Bible in fact tells us that trouble will come. I was seeing something on the television the other day and if I was to look at it in the flesh and hear what I was hearing, I would get discouraged. Many of us have probably seen it. It's doomsday something. These people are preparing for doomsday. By all means, we need to use wisdom. And I understand it happened in Bible times. 
But the greatest preparation that you and I can face is not hoard stuff up, <coughs> place our trust in the Lord. Because eventually your resources are going to run dry. And no matter how much you save or how much you've got, your resources are going to run dry. <coughs> the only peace that you're going to have and the only comfort you're going to have in the midst of your storms is knowing that the Lord is with you. I read about a tragic story the other night. And, uh, or I heard about a tragic story the other night of a, of a woman that seemingly looked as though she had everything. Anything that you and I could ever imagine. But our life has fell apart at some point. And we found her. She's not with us today. She perished. I don't know where she's at. The Bible tells us we're going to go one or two places, heaven or hell. And God has seen to it that you and I are going to go to heaven if we look to Him. I'm sure many people thought the same thing. Lord, do you care if I perish? He cared for that woman. And I'm sure he gave her many opportunities as he gives you tonight, you and I every opportunity to seek him while he can be found. Many people in the Old Testament probably looked around and began to get discouraged. Thinking, Lord, do you care if you perish? All these people get caught up in sins. You've sent the flood. You've, you, you burnt, cast down fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. But yet still, still, sin still exists. What was going to happen? We just continue to perish. He says, I've got the answer. I've had it the whole time. I'm going to send my son. We might have looked up people begging and maybe pleading out to heaven. Where's the answer? We're perishing. Don't you care? He says, yes, I care. I care so much I'm going to give my only begotten son to die on the cross for your sins so that you don't perish. That's the message. It's to know that you and I won't have to perish. We can have eternal life, praise the Lord. But as I begin to think, and maybe many of us have people in our lives that are, are facing difficult times. Facing discouragement. Maybe we have. You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be down and out. Because we, we got one that will lift us up. I like how that song says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted each and every one of us. And he'll continue to lift us up. We'll take hold of his hand. He'll lift us up. You and I will perish in you and I, our lives, we're going down a dead end road leading straight to hell. But God seen to it that He brought us out. He set our feet upon a rock. He will not suffer our foot to be moved. He will not see us to be perished like the Bible just told us. He will not allow us to perish. And I think of all these people that we might know around us that their lives are falling apart. What are we going to do about it? 